AWR Design Environment is a very powerful simulator which enables you to simulate very complex circuits. It would be a very useful tool for you throughout your degree course. This is not just a design tool, however, it is also very useful to corroborate the theory that you learn in lectures and also explore your own doubts and curiosity. Let's create our first circuit. From the Project tab on the left-hand side of the screen, right-click on Circuit Schematics, select New Schematic and then give it a name. Let's call it My First Circuit. Then just press Enter or click Create. A new window opens up which gives us a canvas on which we can set up our circuit schematic. In order to get the elements that we need, we may click on the Elements tab and then under Circuit Elements we could click on Sources, expand that and then DC and then select DC Voltage Source which is abbreviated with DCVS in the simulator. But there is a much easier way to find the elements that we need. Let's go back to the Project tab and then click on the Schematic window and press Ctrl L. A new window opens up which allows us to search for circuit elements. Note that as a default the simulator will look for the element based on its own acronym, not the full description. This is indicated by the funnel symbol which is currently on the name heading. To search for the voltage source for instance, now that we know what acronym the simulator uses for it, we can simply type DCVS in the search box and this will allow us to find our DC voltage source. If we didn't know the acronym however and wanted to search for an element based on its description, we could simply click on the description heading whilst keeping the control key pressed. You can see that now the funnel has moved to the description heading and this means that the search now will be carried out based on the element description rather than its own acronym. So if we type in the search box DC voltage, then we'll also be able to find our DC voltage source. To place it on the schematic, simply double click on it, then move it to wherever you want it on the schematic window and simply click to place it. Remember that voltage is always a relative measure, so we need to place a ground reference on the schematic as well. To do this, we can either press Ctrl G, a new ground symbol will appear, and we can place that on the negative terminal of the voltage source, or equivalently, we could have simply gone onto the toolbar up here and click on the ground symbol. Now we need a resistor, so let's press Ctrl L again, and in the search box, let's type resistor. You can see that a number of elements have come up, but the one that we need is the simplest one, the RES element. Again, double click on it, and then you can right click to rotate it, and then place it on the schematic like so. To connect the resistor to the voltage source, simply hover over any of the terminals of the elements, and when the wiring tool appears, left click and drag the mouse to create a connecting wire, then click again to create the connection. The green square indicates that the connection was successful. Let's do that for the other terminal of the resistor as well. Now we have a 1 volt DC voltage source connected across the terminals of a 1 ohm resistor. What will be the current through the resistor? You should be able to work out this very easily using Ohm's law, but let's see how we can do this with a simulator. What we want to do is add annotations on the schematic which will show the values of current and voltages for all elements. To do this, right click on the circuit schematic name and select Add Annotation. Select DCIA, which will give us the DC current for all elements, and then click on Apply. Then select DCVA underscore N, and this will give us the voltages for all nodes in the circuit. Click on Apply, and then OK. If I expand this section here, you can see that now we've got the two annotations set up, one for the current and the other one for the voltages. To simulate, click on the lightning icon up here, or press F8. We can untick this box, so we won't have this window in the way once the simulation is finished. We can't see them terribly well, however, so what we can do is zoom into the circuit a little bit. To do this, simply click on the magnifying lens with the plus symbol on the toolbar, and then select the circuit schematic, and this will make it a little bit bigger and easier to see. Unsurprisingly, the current through the resistor is 1 amp. However, the simulator uses milliamps as a default unit, so it's showing 1000 milliamps. If we want to change the units, we can simply go onto the Project tab again, double-click on Project Options, then select the Global Units tab, and under Current, we can select Amps. Then click on OK, and if we simulate again, we can see that now the units have changed.